Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. I hope you like the video today and if you do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications button so YouTube will notify you the next time I upload a video. Today's video is all about using thrifted shoes for home decor. So my first project is a man's hiking boot. Now, Father's Day is coming up this weekend, so if you are getting a loved one something for Father's Day, whether it's construction boots, hiking boots, or maybe even just a pair of tennis shoes, one of the things you can do is just go ahead and get some extra tools and pack it inside, so it's kind of a double-for-your-money kind of gift. My second project is something that I know that you've seen a lot before on the internet or on Pinterest. And it's where you take a rubber rain boot and paint it and then maybe put some decor on it and then put some flowers on it and put it on your front porch or maybe a covered porch um, just somewhere outside. So that's where the concept kind of comes in. Now on this one, I really struggled with getting the paint to stick like I wanted it to. So I uh, sprayed it first with rust-oleum white linen chalk paint to put a good prime coat on it and then i decided because it was still a little tacky sticky that i would just go ahead and bring it in and just brush on the same rust-oleum linen white chalk paint instead of trying to get, continue to spray paint it and that made it stick really well however after it dried and i came back in to start working on it I noticed that it had a crackle effect and I have no idea why that happened, but I really did like the way it turned out. Now, this is a napkin that I'm gonna use to decoupage only one side of it. Now, if you've never decoupaged with a napkin before, it's so easy and it's so cheap and that's what I like about it. So when you get a napkin, a decorative napkin, it's gonna have several layers. So you need to get it down to the, the very last layer. And when you find that last layer, it's almost translucent, but also know that it's very easy to tear. So you saw me using what is a water pen, and it's something that I've had for a long time that I used to use when I was making like greeting cards. And you can also take just a paintbrush and dip it in water, and then you just brush around whatever design on the napkin that you want to isolate and then decoupage. There's that water pen right there. Now, if it's a small design, you might not want to do that because um, the water sometimes can spread just a little bit. So when I do that, I always try to go around a little bit farther than the design that I want. So now what I've done is I've pulled all of the flowers out that I want to use to decoupage on that one side. Initially, I was going to use some of those blue flowers, but when I started to decoupage and kind of lay out my design, I decided I didn't like that. And I decided to only just use the pink flowers. And one of the things I did was there was a stem that was kind of here and there on the design. So I pulled that off so that it looked like it was more a stem for the flowers, when in reality, it was just an extra piece on the napkin. But I didn't use the water pen for that. I actually tore that because I wanted to make sure that I got exactly what I needed. Now I'm using DIY, DIY liquid patina to put it on. You can also use Mod Podge, but I like the liquid patina because it's a lot thinner and it just seems to go on better. And so I just brush on a little bit of that liquid patina and then lay my napkin down. And you need to know that when you put it down, if you decide to move it, it's probably going to tear. But that is the beauty of just using a napkin. They're very inexpensive and there's a lot of design that you can use on a napkin. So I just kind of place it here and there. And I try to make it look like there's a branch that goes all the way up the side of the boot. But it's really all I've done is I've just torn like little stems when I did that so that I could add them all together and make it look like one long stem. 
So I tried to be real selective about what I was pulling out of that napkin to use because I wanted it to look real cohesive and that it looked like it all came that way. So here's my questions to you today. Have you ever done this before? Have you ever spray painted a rain boot before? And if you have, please share with me what sort of paint that you used because I'm not finding a spray paint that I like that adheres well to it without making it sticky. And also, is this something that you would put on your front porch? And remember, it doesn't have to be shabby chic. It can also be farmhouse or cottage core. And you can even use a child's rain boot. Even if all you wanted to do was buy one of those printed rain boots and just put some flowers on it. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I love script and florals all together. And so, um, I do not want to press that stamp straight onto the boot just in case I mess up. So I take tissue paper that I get from the Dollar Tree. Now, if you do this, make sure that you stamp on the side that is not shiny. And then I go ahead and stamp it with, I think it stays on ink. And then I'm going to tear that. I'm not going to use the water pen on this at all because I don't want anything to get too close to that ink. And the stamp set that I'm using is called I See Paris from Redesign with Prima. And it's such a pretty stamp set. And I think that you would really like it. And Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage, this is probably her favorite stamp as well. But there's just a lot of French script on it and just French designs that I think you'll really like. Now, when I'm tearing this tissue paper, I'm trying to tear it almost to where the design is. I don't want to have any extra of that white tissue paper because I don't want it to look like it's tissue paper. I want it to look like it just kind of blends right with the shoe. So once again, before I even decided to lay it what down where, I already kind of mapped it out and decided what I wanted to put. Now, right there on the table is just a stamp of, from, of some French script. And instead of using that one whole piece, I tore it into several different pieces because really it doesn't matter necessarily what it says. It's more the script that you want on it. And it gives it an extra layered effect and it kind of builds it out just a little bit, even though it's still straight on that shoe. And I just think it turned out so pretty. So do you like this? Is this something you would do? And if you were going to do one, what colors would you use? I know that later on I found some really pretty pink flowers in my stash that I put in it. And my granddaughters, when I was working on it today, they really liked it a lot. So I'm sure that if I put it out on the porch, they're probably going to play with it just a little bit. And I'm pulling out my liquid patina. Now I'm going to tell you, I did let that tissue paper, I let it sit there for just a little bit before I decided to put it down with liquid patina because I didn't, I know that it stays on ink, but I just wanted to make sure that it was good and dry before I laid it down. And you can see that I just took that script writing and I just tore it into little pieces. Now I did stamp that little crayon, but I decided after I was working on it that I didn't want to use it. I thought it was just a little bit too much. And so I put down, I think about four pieces of that script. And then I had the little stamp that says Paris, because remember one of the things I've mentioned before, when you have, you know, decor in your home, if you're going to have things like this, you want odd numbers. So I wanted like five little extra pieces beside the flower to be on my rain boot because odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. But please don't ask me why. It's just something that they talk about in like interior design. So you just got to trust me on this one, but I promise it looks good. But I really, really like this boot. Now I have to tell you, I tried another boot and I spray painted it and I tried to put some transfers on and it was a nightmare. The transfers pulled off of the spray paint. 
So I just had to scrap that project and get the other rain boot that came with the set and do this because I did want to put something like this into this video. So I hope you like it. But I think this may be my favorite project today. I'm not real sure. But there's a project coming up that's really special and near and dear to my heart. And I believe it's the next one coming up. And then what I do is I just take that liquid patina and I very gently brush over any of those little pieces of napkin just to make sure that they're adhere. Now, I did try to stamp on tissue paper with my favorite ink, which is Stone Gray. But when I did that, I just didn't think it looked good enough. It was, too, it was almost too light for this because the flowers were so bold. And then I didn't initially paint the foot of the boot because I wanted to just go ahead and get started on the boot. But I'm going to go ahead and paint it. I didn't even try to spray paint this because it's going to be sitting on the porch anyway. Um, but I just think it looks better to have the bottom painted. So here you go. What do you think? I love it. I just think the pink flowers are so pretty. And pink is my favorite color of flowers. Now, my grandmother's favorite color was yellow roses. So every time I see those, I think of my grandmother. So is this something that you would do? Or have you ever done it before? And remember, if you've ever spray painted a rubber boot and it worked for you, please, please let me know what kind of paint you used. Now, my next project is so, so special. So my next project is decorating a pair of leather ballet slippers. My four-year-old granddaughter is going to be taking a ballet camp this summer for the first time. And yes, those are her sweet little hands. I'm trying to teach her how to put a transfer on. Now, I do want you to know that I got permission from her mom and dad for her to do this. Um, they asked, but for privacy reasons, to just not show her face. So she comes in my craft room when the two-year-old's asleep, and she's just fascinated by all the equipment. And she's been wanting to help me with one of the videos. So when we found out that she was going to get to go to this ballet camp, I kind of had this idea that we would make her shoes extra special. So I'm using a transfer set by Timeless Designs, and it's called Vintage Lavender. And I just cut out different pieces here and there, and there was actually one piece of lavender that was more in the shape of a little wreath, and I used part of that too. So none of it really matches all the way, but it didn't matter because they're all just like little lavender flowers. So <laughs> she's so funny. She's trying really hard to push down and put that transfer on, but telling her to push hard as a four-year-old is different than me trying to push hard. So she's, she's trying really hard, and... I think it was still a pretty good learning experience for her. And she was so funny. She kept looking up at the camera, which is right up above us. And she would see herself in the camera, and she would see her hands. But we had talked a lot about, now, you can't show your face in the video. And so she would say, Grammy, she said, you can't see my face. You can only see my hands. And she just thought it was a lot of fun, but... After a little while, she, she got kind of tired of it, and so we just stopped, and plus the baby was waking up, and I told her I would finish them later. And so we, or I, finished off the fronts of it, and then um, I wanted to do a little bit extra because, well, if you know me, if you've watched my videos, I always like to do just to something a little bit extra on projects to just give it that extra touch that makes it just more custom. And so, on the outside of the ballet shoes, on the outside side of it, if that makes sense, um, back at the back, I just kind of cut out some little pieces of lavender to transfer on the back. Because, you know, when she's walking around in ballet class and, um, you know, somebody's going to see her purple flowers on her um, ballet slippers, and then they see that little extra part on the back, they're going to be like, ah, look at that, isn't that so cute? And I just, I want it to be special for her. And by the way, purple is her favorite color. So we are actually working on a video 
just different things here and there. Um, everything is going to be purple. So she's super excited about it. But it's one of those things where it's going to take us a while to get this video made because we can only do it when the baby's asleep. But I'm just going on and putting on the transfers. Now, I, I don't know whether I should seal it or not. So let me know if you think I should seal it. But with it being leather, I, I just don't know what I should do about it. So is this something that you would do? And also, did you take ballet when you were little? I know that I did not. Um, my daughter took ballet, and I think she took tap, but she ended up moving more toward gymnastics. She seemed to like that a little bit better. And my granddaughter, she actually likes to put on my daughter's recital costumes when she's here sometimes. Now, my next project is putting live plants into old boots. Now, this is my husband's boot. He actually is a brick mason, and these shoes have some kind of holes in them, but he still wears them because he says they're comfortable, but his work boots get pretty dirty. Mortar gets on them, and then, you know, he's, he's out where they're building brand new houses, so it's pretty muddy and dirty sometimes, so they get pretty filthy. So, um, he knows that there is going to come a time when this pair of shoes just completely falls apart, but um, he told me that I could use this pair for the video, but I have to give it back. Um, and so what I wanted to show you is that if your um, husband or your dad or whoever, or if you know somebody that's in construction and their shoes kind of get older and they're about to fall apart, ask them if you can have them. And what you're going to want to do is if you're going to put live plants in them, you want to make sure that you drill holes down in the bottom of it so the water can drain well. But for video purposes only, I took this trailing ivy in these petunias and I pulled them out of the little plastic and put them in a little grocery sack and stuffed it inside that boot. And then I went and planted them in the flower garden later. Now my next project is a cowboy boot along the same theme, but, theme, but this is faux flowers and faux greenery. And so those are some little hang tags that I made. So this is sort of the same concept. You can, if you've got an old pair of cowboy boots or if, if you have a pair of boots from, you know, like your dad or your uncle or whatever, and you want to just kind of spice up, you know, maybe your hearth or whatever, this would be something neat that you could put out. Now, I know you're wondering why in the world has she got a set of spurs sitting there? Well, when my son was little, he used to like to watch this program called Hey Dude on Nickelodeon. And there was a little boy on there named Ted, and he just thought he was so cool. And so he wanted to dress like Ted. And so we had to get him a little, little leather cowboy hat. And for Christmas, he got some spurs and some chaps and like a little whip and stuff. And actually, to be honest with you, he wanted to be called Ted after this little boy. Now, my son is 36 years old, and we actually still call him Ted. That is his nickname, which is kind of funny. So, these are the hang tags that I made. Because if you have a vendor booth, um, or if you're giving this away to somebody, and you want to kind of spice it up, then you can make these little hang tags. And I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. But if you don't know much about hang tags, but you're interested, um, I'm going to link... Um, Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage. I'm going to link her channel um, and the latest hang tag video that she made. She's the queen of hang tags. She is so, so good at what she does. Um, and I'm just constantly amazed at what she does. And she has a little store, so she makes the hang tags for the items that she sells in her store. So if this is something you're interested in, make sure that you go and watch that video. And even if you're not interested in the hang tags, make sure you go to her channel she is just the sweetest and dearest friend, and you'll just love everything she does. So this is another idea that you can use with an old boot. Now, here's the hang tags. This is just a simple version of a hang tag. This is some cardstock that actually feels like that heavy craft paper, and I'm tearing off the edges so it'll be more kind of organic. And then I'm actually going to paint it. Now, it's cardstock, so it's a little bit thicker, but paint is wet, and you're putting it on paper. So when you paint it, it's going to kind of curl up as it dries. But before you finish it off, then just kind of bend it and 
straighten it out and it's fine. So here's me painting it and I can't remember, I think I painted both sides. Um, and so anyway, the little graphics that I used, I found in an old book. Now I have a vendor booth and I sell a lot of um, vintage and antique books, books in my booth. So anytime I can find some at a good price, then I pick them up. And sometimes I pick them up just for me because I like them. I like to use them for staging. And these little graphics came from an old book that was about like little cowboy or something. And so one of the hang tags has got a picture of a, or a graphic of a man sitting on a tractor. And the other one is a graphic of a cow. So I thought it kind of fit with that. All right, this is our last project. Now, it kind of goes along with some of the other ones we've done, but this is where I want to actually show you how I put it together. Now, this is a really special boot. Um, my mom's best friend, her husband passed away a while back, and when she was cleaning, she found his old boots. And she knows that I craft, and I do, you know, different things. So one Sunday morning at church, she asked me, um, if I bring you these boots, can you do something special with them? Because I want something special for them so I can give them to my kids. And so we were just kind of coming up with some different ideas. And I told her that actually one idea is to like make a, make a lamp out of them. And so we ended up deciding that we were just going to put some faux greenery in it. And so she said, now I'm going to bring them to you, but they're kind of dirty. So I'll wash them. And I told her, I said, oh, no, don't do that. Um, leave the dirt on it because, well, that dirt was on it when he was alive. And she got kind of teary-eyed, and um, she agreed that that dirt needed to stay on those boots. So when she brought them, then I took them outside, and I wanted that dirt to stay on them. And I, but I knew that eventually it would kind of wipe off if, if I didn't seal it. So I sprayed it with a matte sealer, and it made the dirt look a little bit different. The boot is not shiny, but it just looks different, but it still is fine. And this faux greenery, I got it at Hobby Lobby. And, you know, if you go to Hobby Lobby, you know that every other week they have the, like, florals half off. I, I think it's half off. And so, um, and by the way, just a little tip. On the weekend, on the weeks that they don't have florals, um, they have the wedding section that's on sale so they have some really good florals in that too so i used three bunches of that greenery and it was kind of tangled up because it was like trailing ivy and so i had to straighten it up and then the lavender that i stick in the the little inside the boot is actually came from walmart and i don't know if you have ever looked at the florals at walmart some of them are pretty good and their lavender to me i think is the best and it's cheaper than dollar tree so um, what I'm doing is I have, I, th I think, three bunches of the lavender. Um, but instead of just sticking the whole stem in, the whole bunch of them, um, and then just kind of moving them around, I actually took each stem and cut it off with pliers and stuck those stems in individually. Now, I made two boots. Um, my mom helped me with the first one. Um, now, she did not want to be videotaped. So we did the first one over at her house and then... Um, I brought everything back to my house, and I did the second one. So last Monday, um, we met with her for breakfast. My mom meets her for breakfast every Monday morning, and um, I gave them to her, and she was pretty excited. And she was actually planning on giving them to him this week. But <laughs> she was so funny. She um, As soon as she got home, she was so excited, she called her kids and told them both they had to come over to the house. And she just wanted to go ahead and give it to them right then, and so she sent me a thank you note, and it was. I'm just really excited that she was able to give something like this to her kids. And her daughter is going to put hers on her covered porch. So every time she looks at it, she'll think about her dad. So tell me something. What was your favorite project today? Is this something that you would do? Um, and if you were going to do like a shoe or a boot to decorate... What kind of shoe would you use? And what do you think about putting an old boot outside with some greenery in it? Maybe sitting on a tree, sitting up underneath the tree or on your porch. We live out in the country, so anytime anything kind of different is sitting around in my yard, it just seems kind of normal around here.
So this is just looking down onto the boot. But which one is your favorite today? I think the rain boot was my favorite. I really liked that, the way it turned out. And then my second favorite was, of course, that sweet little ballet slipper. So, guys, y'all are just the best subscribers. Um, you just send the sweetest notes, and you just make me feel so appreciated. And the sweet things that you say make me want to do more videos. So, um, today is Wednesday. And then I've got a new video coming out on Saturday, and I am super excited about that. So I hope you get a chance to watch it. But guys, make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope that you have a great week. But thank you so much for watching. Y'all are just the best. Have a good day.